Once a patient becomes metastatic, it's really where I, as a surgeon, and what I can offer as a surgeon really falls um, into the background. The clinician coming in said there is this really devastating clinical problem that babies, they were born with congenital heart disease. And the procedures we're using now are really invasive, really brutal. I want to see a world, whether it's you know 10 years from now or 50 years from now, where every time it's just a wiring problem, we can fix it. So you know, spinal cord injury is just a wiring problem. It really pushed me to try to say, well, if I can't help these patients anymore through my surgical practice, what can I do in the lab? And through our conversations over the years, we realized that we actually have an opportunity here to engineer the niche to which cancer cells would travel during metastasis so that we would know where the cancer cells are going and then could use that as an early detection system. We were looking into using ultrasound to generate a cavitation. Which is essentially control of acoustic micro bubbles to fractionate and destroy the tissue. And, and looking into the possibility of using that mechanism for non-invasive surgery. Originally, people felt that cavitation was uncontrollable and a phenomenon to be avoided. It was dangerous. It, it was almost a draw of luck that we tried a certain set of parameters uh, and they actually worked. And, and then we went back to look at the mechanism. And once that was understood, then how we could apply this became very interesting. In the case of somebody who has like a spinal cord injury, we are trying to get signals from the brain in motor cortex and use those signals to control the paralyzed arm again. So we work really closely with neurosurgery and with Parag. You need to find a neurosurgeon who doesn't think this is crazy, and he's been a phenomenal collaborator. When I joined the faculty in 2005, the neural engineering community here was actually quite small. We've been able to recruit many more faculty, particularly in biomedical engineering, who have neural engineering as an interest. Cindy Chestek, Tim Bruns, and many others come together with clinicians like me to think about ways to solve relevant medical problems today. Michigan is very unique in that it's an incredibly collaborative environment not just within a department or division, but across schools and colleges. The real opportunity that Michigan has is being a top 10 engineering school and a top 10 medical school co-located. So it's very simple and easy to pick up the phone and call somebody in biomedical engineering and talk about a problem and, and start to develop a research relationship. We need to work together so that we understand the different strengths that we each bring to the table to help our patients. In functional neurosurgery, we take care of diseases like Parkinson's disease, paralysis, pain. I think that engineering helps because when I'm doing my clinical work, I'm always thinking about ways to make things better. And I hope one day we can tell the patients that you can actually remove your blood clots, remove your tumor non-invasively using a technology called hysterotripsy. Being able to work in the lab provided me a means to sort of have a renewed sense of optimism about what I could offer to patients. I got into this field just because I sort of had interdisciplinary interests, but I stayed in this field because I started to believe that I was going to walk down the street and people were going to have implantable devices enabling them to communicate, to move. One of the most wonderful things that's come out of this whole process for me is sort of a new perspective on what's possible for us to do in our lifetime. <music>